to be you. Welcome to a fun and exciting learning in ELEC 111. Hi, hello, teacher Lisa is here for you and together we will learn you and exciting words. Let's go and discover the wonders of ESP for learning of English is fun. And it's free for everyone. I hope you are all doing fine. Today we shall have a new topic, which is the types of vocabulary. Before we go over on our lesson proper, I would like to inform you that I invited some of my co-teachers to discuss the other four types of vocabulary. Later on, we will be having Mom Novel Gas. Ma'am Di Torres, Ma'am Lopez, and Ma'am Aguilar. Now, are you ready? Yeah! Very good! Class, it is deemed important to study the different types of vocabulary as they need different focus and treatment as well. Shall we move to the first type? Good! The first type is his spoken and written vocabulary. A spoken list seems to embrace some lexical words like know, think, well, get, and write. A spoken texts are less dense than most of the written text in terms of vocabulary. Moreover, spoken texts are tend to be vogue. And general words are more frequently used in everyday speech than in written text. On the other hand, class, written data is mainly made up of lexical, non-lexical, and non-content items, including pronouns, prepositions, and conjunctions. Now, class, we can deduce that spoken language is the central source of the contact to a communicative language. But, written text continues to be a fundamental source for input. Class, that's all for spoken and written vocabulary. Be ready for the next type of vocabulary which will be given to us by Mom Novel Gas. Behave! The second type of vocabulary is core and non-core vocabulary. So what do we mean about core vocabulary? As the word core suggests, core vocabulary refers to those words that occur frequently and are more central to the language than others. These words are thought to be core because they are easy to find their undying for. In addition, they are neutral in formality and usable in a wide variety of situations. Furthermore, these core words can be used to paraphrase or give definitions to other words, say for example, and the set of words lame, slender, thin, emaciated, and scrawny, which do you think is a core word? Given the characteristic of a core word, we can easily see that the word thin is the core word. On the other hand, in ESP teaching, we also come across subject-specific vocabulary, which is non-core as far as the language is concerned. Carter determined subject-specific vocabulary should be considered non-core because of its lack in neutrality and association with specialized topic. Thus, learners with specific or academic purposes may need to acquire them for their specializations. Say, for example, the words placebo and dialysis are words that are only used in medical purposes, wherein other learners unrelated to this specific field may not necessarily need to learn this word. To sum it up, the salient difference between core and non-core vocabulary is that core vocabulary refers to those words that are commonly used in both oral and written language, while non-core vocabulary are words that are only used for a specific field. Thank you, Mom Novel Gas, for that very informative discussion. Class, are you still there? Yeah! Very good. 
And now, we will move to the next type of vocabulary. Today, students, I'm your teacher, Bianca, and I'm here to discuss the discourse structuring vocabulary and procedural vocabulary. In discourse structuring vocabulary, there are a number of abstract noun called anaphoric in the English language, which means have no independent lexical content. Their primary purpose is to organize dialogue, to outline or encapsulate previously stated ideas, and to link one sentence to the next. While procedural vocabulary often used to describe and make sense of more difficult terms as well as to paraphrase, interpret, and arrange them during conversation. They are used in dictionaries to include meaning so students can use them to learn new terms and expand their vocabulary. That's the discourse structuring vocabulary and procedural vocabulary. Thank you for the thorough discussion, Mom De Torres. Good morning class, this is Teacher Grace, and today we will talk about the technical, semi-technical, and general vocabulary. Did you know that in teaching ESV context, it is very important to have the distinction between the two categories of vocabulary? This is the technical and semi-technical vocabulary that is very important for the learners who are studying English for specific and academic purposes. Dudley Evans and St. John suggest resolving overlapping categories into two broader groupings. It is the vocabulary that is used in general language but has a higher frequency of occurrence in specific and technical descriptions and distinctions. Next is the vocabulary that has specialized and restricted meanings in certain descriptions and which may vary in meanings across descriptions. The first category can be classified as semi-technical vocabulary, while the second can be classified as the technical vocabulary. That's all for today, class. Thank you! Hi, everyone. I am Teacher Leanne, and we are now going to discuss the fifth type of vocabulary, which is the academic vocabulary. According to Becky L. Spivey on her uploaded article in HoneyHandouts.com, academic vocabulary are the list of words that are used and encountered in a academic dialogue or context. Most of the words included on the list are used in a formal conversation. The words that are used in informal conversation are not included on the list, though most of the words on academic vocabulary are frequently used by the students in a classroom situations. Like for instance, instead of using the word watch, the academic word used as a substitute for the word watch is observe, which is way more formal than the previous term. Introducing, discussing, and using academic vocabulary is one of the strategies in teaching academic language. It is because academic vocabulary helps the students to know and understand oral directions and instructions inside a classroom, and it helps the students in comprehending a text and academic papers in different subject areas. That's all for academic vocabulary. Thank you for that explicit discussion, Mama Gilar. Come on, come on, come on, open your notes and have fun, for English is fun! This has been an amazing educational journey with you. Did you have fun? Yeah! Me too! Again, this is Teacher Lisa, and remember that English is fun and for everyone. See you again! Here on Minsu TV.